Hey Star Trek fans, so a few days ago my brother and I were talking about future movies coming out this summer and of course we talked about Star Trek in the Darkness. And we were mainly talking about the villain of Star Trek in the Darkness played by Benedict Cumberpatch who plays the character John Harrison. Now although we kind of have a good idea of what he will be doing in this movie, we really have no idea who John Harrison is. Who is John Harrison? What's his motivation? Why is he doing what he's doing? So we're trying to theorize uh, like who this person is. And before we get into um, the theory that we came up with, I just want to talk about some of the theories out there that who John Harrison is. Of course, the big theory is that John Harrison is Khan. Um, although there are a lot of similarities between John Harrison and Khan, both are highly confident, highly intelligent, and superiorly stronger than a normal human being should be. And they appear to be great rivals for Captain Kirk. But people have to remember, like, the events and the timeline of, 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 of the Star Trek universe. Because um, in the last movie, Nero came back on the date of, Ke of Captain Kirk's birth and changed time. That's when history became an alternate timeline. Everything that happened before that, that's still cemented in time. That is still the same. The crew of the NX-01 Enterprise, uh, you know, you know, Captain Jonathan Archer, Commander Tucker, Commander T'Pol, the origins of... Starfleet, the United Federation of Planets, that still exists in the, in the Star Trek universe. That is still the same. And everything before that is still the same. So you still have the Third World War, First Contact, the Argumentation War, that all still fits within this ultimate timeline. And if that all still fits, the like, Khan, along with all of his fathers on the Botany Bay, are still out there in the galaxy, never to be seen or heard from again. Uh, essentially, until um, in the original timeline when Captain Kirk finds him in like the first season of the original series. But um, just so to think about that, clearly he cannot be Khan unless in, in, somewhere between the last, between between this movie and the last movie, Starfleet did find the Botany Bay in which uh, John Harrison is secretly Khan. I mean, yes, is it a is it a possibility? Absolutely. But uh, it just I think it's a bit far fetched, and I just think. You know why use uh, um, why go back to an old villain when you can clearly you know make something better, make something more interesting. And so, not that Khan is not interesting. I'm just saying that I just think that creati creatively speaking, J.J. Abrams probably could think of something better. And getting Khan, having Khan back, it's just it's a little bit far fetched for me to believe. Now the other now the other big theory out there is, which is more highly unlikely and kind of fun to think about. But uh, it's the one that I think is completely BS. But some people think that John Harrison is a future uh, evil version of John Luke Picard. Um, now, although Captain Picard, after his retirement from Starfleet, he does become an ambassador to Vulcan, and he does work with Ambassador Spock for a little while. So it is possible that uh, he did know about Red Matter, which is which kind of helped cause this whole you know alternate reality thing. But um, if that was the case, wouldn't Picard come back as Sir Patrick Stewart, uh, uh, you know how old he is. Um, but who knows? Maybe in this alternate timeline, time travel is more po is more easily possible in the time of Picard, and so maybe a younger version of him does come back, and he is evil. You know, it's it's hard to say. I mean, in the Star Trek universe, anything is possible. But I and it would be cool to see Picard and Kirk go at it. But I just, I think that's way too far fetched. I'm not betting any money that John Harrison is an evil Captain Picard. Now, for our theory of who John Harrison is, in the trailer, uh, the, like after the attack on London, uh, a whole bunch of captains, commanders, admirals, they're in this board meeting at Starfleet Command, essentially, and they're talking about the incident. And, they re and then they identify the man as one of Starfleet's top agents. That word alone, that last word, agents or agent, that, that speaks volume in the Star Trek universe, especially within Starfleet. Because if you work in Starfleet, you are pretty much referred to as an officer, typically, and not an agent or an operative. And to say he's an agent, uh, the only the, I, I watch a lot of Star Trek, and the only people that are referred to as agents that work in Starfleet are members of the organization Section Thirty One. For those who don't know what Section Thirty One is, imagine they are like they're like the part of the CIA, and they're like a shadowy organization that helps protect. Uh, the well-being and, st and the stability of both Starfleet and the, f the United Federation of Plan Planets. Uh, what they do is controversial, and they have been known to 
kill certain targets, but all for the well-being of Starfleet and, and, and the Federation and its citizens. Now, uh, with John Harrison doing all these things, has John Harrison gone rogue as a rogue as a as a Section 31 rogue agent, or has Section 31 in, in its entirety gone rogue? In which case, it would be very dangerous to both Dolphy and the Federation if that happened, because Section 31, they have a lot of intelligence, a lot of resources that they can use, and the fact that um, John Harrison has a huge ship, where did he get that ship? The Enterprise at the time was considered one of the biggest ships ever built. Where did this other ship come from? Who built it? I mean, obviously you can't build something that big in secret, or can you? Maybe Section 31 did something. Maybe they had the resources and, resources and the knowledge and the people to create such a great ship. And then the other part of our theory is that John Harrison is an augmentation. Um, in the trailer, John Harrison um, says, I am better, in which Captain Kirk replies to, at what? And John Harrison says, everything, suggesting that John Harrison can do anything Captain Kirk can do, and he can do it better. He's highly confident, highly intelligent, which augmentations are. And in the trailer, we also see the strength of Benedict Cumberpatch. Because uh, he appears to be punching somebody, and when he punches that person, they fly back like two or three feet. A normal per when a normal person punches somebody in the stomach, they're not going to fly back two or three feet. So obviously, John Harrison is really strong. Stronger than that, that is considered normal. And then later in the trailer, John Harrison and Spock get uh, get on this fight on this transport going through the air or whatever, and people gotta real realize Vulcans are very strong. They are they are trained in combat. Uh, they are very they are with probably the most elite soldiers in the entire Federation. All of these this is a race of logical people uh, that they have suppressed their emotions. Really, Vulcans. Are, can be formidable warriors, and they can easily like take any human down. And with John Harrison being able to turn the tables and look like he's he's easily beating Spock, would show that he does have superior strength. And all factors, uh, uh, all these factors show that he could possibly be an augmentation, and that Starfleet has a few augments around just in case things go bad. But what happens when one of these augmentations? decide to turn the tables on Starfleet and give them a bad day. Who do you turn to then? But that is our theory uh, that he's an augmentation and he, he is a possible member of Section 31. So what do you guys think? Um, did you did you like our theory? Or, or do you believe that he is Khan or an evil future version of Jean-Luc Picard? Let me know in the comment section below. But the only way we're going to know is, is wait for a few weeks and watch Star Trek in the Darkness in theaters. I'm really excited. I cannot wait for it. 